is Kenzie Schofield, and I am with the Nocturnal. You guys showed up today, okay? So look at you, you. <laughs> flower wall. Hello. I love it. Well, happy just a national... casual bouquet. Oh yeah, <laughs> here forever. Um, happy National Women's Month. I think that what love makes it. this show so incredible is that you guys are totally badass, and I have never seen a show that celebrates women the way that this show does. I'm wondering if you feel comfortable answering. Is it a, is it hard to find jobs like this in Hollywood? Red, go for it. Yes. <laughs> I think I mean it's funny we were um I'm I'm trying to do more social media stuff and um it was like doing that thing that I feel like most actors hate, which is like going through the treasure trove and like dregs of the internet trying to be like, where's a photo of that thing? And you know, I have had such a I don't know. I've been, I'm so grateful for so many opportunities to work with a lot of incredible actors, but I mean, I was just looking at a picture where it was like, man, man, there were eight of us on stage, seven men, one woman, another one where it was, I think like, you know, five men and one woman. So, you know, I, I feel like it is really special to get to work on a show where the majority of the cast um, are incredibly talented actresses. One of my favorite scenes last year to shoot was, um, a scene where we were running up against the clock and Sonia Walter and I were doing them Molly Margot, like the first kind of, you know, like a real clash between the two of them. Um, when Margot's like, Hey, I'm calling you on this. And you know, Molly's like, I can't believe you're putting this on me. I loved shooting that. I really, really love shooting that. And all of the scenes that I've had an opportunity to, to do sense with our lady characters, they've been extraordinarily fun. Yeah. And just to, to jump off that same note, um, it is rare. Um, unfortunately, it's really rare to get to tell stories like this. And I remember um, it was just after we had finished season one and a girlfriend of mine texted me and asked me, um, what is the show you're working on? And I said, it's about NASA and it's about um, the astronauts and engineers. It takes place in the late 60s. And she said, oh, do you play one of the astronauts girlfriend? And I said, no, I play an astronaut. And it was like, it was, and I screenshot that text conversation because even though, you know, my friend loves me and supports me, her first thought is, oh, it's a story in the 1960s. You must play someone's wife or girlfriend. And I love that Margot is not hitched to a man. Danny is not hitched to a man. These women hold their own weight in this world based on their acumen for science, for their intelligence, for their minds, for their abilities, and not for anything else makes me really proud. I'm going to say yes. I'm just going to speak yeah. up because I'm older than Jody, so I've been around longer, so I can absolutely answer this question. Yes. It's rare. It's a gem. Can I also say I didn't know it when I signed up for the show. I really didn't. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I mean, I knew I was signing up for a well-written space show, but I thought it was a space show. I did not realize it was a stealth vehicle for uh women <laughs> i really didn't and i think it's been an amazing surprise for all of us involved with it actually has been seeing th that this extraordinary momentum that we've all been given i mean season scene after scene this season jody and ren and i all in a room together being wow look at this not a man in sight this is this is our our scene and i love just to carry on i love you know explaining to i was just saying I have a little daughter who's eight. And it, when I explain to my daughter who my character is, I don't use a man's name to define my character. I don't say she's the wife of, she's the girlfriend of, she's the assistant to. I describe Molly Cobb using no other proper noun than Molly Cobb. And that is rare. I think that's so impressive. And I'm so excited for you. Since it's Women's History Month, and I know that the show kind of celebrates certain, you know, real astronauts, um, who inspires you? And Jody, would you would you answer that question first? But is there a female, and it could be your mom, it could be Michelle Obama, it could be anybody. <laughs> is there a, a female specifically that you'd like to acknowledge this month? I mean, I'll just go ahead and acknowledge Sally Ride because it's the person who not only inspired Ellen in a big way, and I will say this, I don't think she's been introduced yet, so I'm gonna backtrack and just go back to what I was saying. I spent a lot of time getting to know or reading and learning about Sally um, leading up to season one because the creators had let me know that 
certainly the personal aspect of Ellen's storyline is, is deeply rooted in Sally's real experience. Um, and I just think she's incredible um, and le left such a legacy, not only in terms of, you know, being the first American woman in space, but also then after she left NASA, went on to truly dedicate her life to bringing science, math, technology to young girls specifically and opening up the possibilities um, for young girls around those subjects. Um, so yeah, shout out to Sally always. It's so much fun to see you guys in the 80s. I love the 80s. <laughs> there's, there's one point where you get in a car and I'm like worried for you because I haven't seen an 80s car in so long that I'm, I can't believe we drove around in those things and that was like a legitimate <laughs> transportation. There is a couple of creative choices made pop culture wise. Um, John Lennon lives. Charles marries Camilla, and I've got my little Diana bust up above me, so we're hostile about it. Also, Jody, here you are as um, as Jackie O. But um, oh. but I, I I was wondering, can you speak on some of those creative choices and what is does it have a bigger purpose? You know, having some of those people live to tell the story. I think what's really fun is watching. Uh, it, it's it's sort of a gentle Easter egg tease really there, there isn't a direct impact on John Lennon living uh on the actual day-to-day -day life of these people but I think what it shows is that how one little tweak can have this ripple effect what they you know call the butterfly effect of uh and how that might spread out and what those wider implications might be um I, I think they're just it's sort of lovely I mean there's a few grace notes Joel Kinnaman drives away and someone hangs up his um you realize he's driven away in an electric car and that because NASA has been funded to the degree that it has because the space race has continued and not stalled so the trickle down of the you know effects of NASA hard one are starting to affect the general population so there are electric cars earlier it's not a big deal nobody's making a huge noise about carbon footprints but the implication is that had NASA been funded to this degree, we'd all be reaping the benefits so much earlier. This butterfly effect is, mm. are you having fun watching the writers have fun with that? Definitely. I mean, I think we could have maybe done with um, uh, some kind of like Mac Michael Jackson moonwalk um, reference because that came out like like right before episode one. But yeah, I feel like that that's always really fun to see kind of like what what they're choosing to do with that and what direction they're taking us in. Um, I, I love seeing that creative side of them. And speaking of that car, uh, that car was an actual, I think it was a 1979 like hatchback. And I had to actually drive it and pull into the parking spot. And I didn't realize that power steering didn't exist. And so I was like <laughs> turning the wheel so hard and nudged the car in front of me because of my inability to maneuver power steering. So we've come a long way. Oh my gosh, that's the great that's the greatest story ever. Thank you so much for that. But I did crack up when I saw you get in that car. Like, girl, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> the show is amazing. You two are absolutely brilliant. And I Thank just I, I it's a pleasure to talk to you. I, I love what you're doing and I can't wait to see more of it. Thank you, Kenzie. Thank you, so much. you look gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kenzie.